Hello. Well, I'm hoping that I'll have some more people here. We had a few on Google Meet, but I don't know if they limited it because it looked like somebody was trying to get on and they couldn't. So if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to ask them below. I'm about to sneeze. Sorry about that. But um, we're doing the new Colossus by Emma Lazarus. I'm going to go over it so that you could redo your homework and get the best grade possible because um, the poem is a little bit challenging. And, and if you didn't do all that Google research, you probably wouldn't know it was about the Statue of Liberty and the Colossus of Rhodes. So um, I'm going to go over it. I have the textbook in front of me that I know you guys do not have, but you see they give you the background information. So I'm going to read it and uh, then I'm going to just go over how you could paraphrase this. If I were you, get out your handy thesaurus because that's really going to be what helps you paraphrase. Um, so here we go. The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus. Hello, Aylin. How are you? I'm so glad you got on. All right. If you have any questions, just put them in the context. Hey, Nassim, how are you? Um, so here we go. The background for this is the title and first two lines of Lazarus' poems, poem refers refer to the Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. A huge statue of the sun god Helios. It was built around 280 BC and stood at the entrance to the harbor of the Greek island of Rhodes. At 100 feet tall, it was around three fifths the size of our Statue of Liberty, so it was smaller. It commemorated a great military victory, but only stood for 54 years before an earthquake toppled it. So, I mean, you guys could totally figure out how long the Statue of Liberty has been up. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's longer than 54 years because I'm 43 and I'll be 44 on Sunday and I've had it up as long as I've been here. So I'm pretty sure it's been here for longer than 54 years. Um, so this they're comparing the Statue of Liberty to this. Hello, how are you guys doing? Um, so... They're comparing it to the Colossus of Rhodes, which the statue was smaller and it was so powerful back in its time. And now here we have the Statue of Liberty that's so much more grand, so much bigger. And um, in the first line, we're gonna go over what she uses to say, how to describe it. Not like the brazen giants of Greek fame. Brazen, look at that word, what does that mean? Does anybody know what brazen means? You could write it in the comment. Anyone? It means strong up front, you're bold, right? Not like the bold giant of Greek fame. Fame is to be famous, right? That this, this statue has well known, it's famous um, in the Greek culture. With conquering limbs astride from land to land. So he, she's saying that it's, the Statue of Liberty is not like this giant this bold giant with conquering limbs. Conquering means, you know, when you play your video games, you fight and you win, you conquer someone. And limbs are your body parts, your arms, your legs, right? So they're, they're, this statue represents how it conquered other countries or, or people. A stride is just standing one leg here and here, and they're from land to land. Here at our sea washed which is like the ocean where it hit, you know, sea washes where you see the white foam and it's washing across the shore. Sunset gates shall stand here. Where is here? Here where you live in the United States, in the New York, where you see the Statue of Liberty. A mighty woman with a torch. That's who holds the torch, the Statue of Liberty, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. I just love that line because the language is so beautiful, right? You could just say her flame is in a torch, her flame is is in this lantern, but they don't say that. They say is imprisoned lightning. Imprisoned has this powerful impact on you, right? It means you're in chains. It means you don't have freedom. So to use a word like imprisoned really gives a strong, powerful meaning to this text. Whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name Mother of Exiles. So they call the Statue of Liberty Mother of Exiles. And what is an exile? An exile 
if you have your textbook, it's, I know you don't, they give you the definition. It says people who are forced to live in another country. So they're thrown out of their country. They're not allowed back into their country. They're exiled. So she is the mother of people who are thrown out of their country. She's the mother of immigrants. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. So this torch with the imprisoned light is saying welcome right? Her mild eyes command. So mild is this peaceful, gentle type of, of look. Her mild eyes command. Command is a strong word, right? You command because you can, you have power. Weak things don't command. So even though she's very gentle, she's very strong. Her mild eyes command. The air bridge, sorry, the air bridged harbor. I have to shut that off because we'll be hearing it the whole time. Um, let's see. Okay. Mommy texts me. A few people are wanting me. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Um, it's so nice to see you guys on. All right. So she goes on to say the, that the air bridged Harbor, that twin cities frame. So do you guys know what the twin cities are or the twin states are? She says cities, but for me, I take this as the two states because for me, I have a story behind this. Um, so you know New York because you're in New York and you can see the Statue of Liberty if you go near the Verrazano Bridge. But New Jersey also um, surrounds that harbor, right? You have, um, there was, all right, so if you guys noticed the license plate a while back, they had the Statue of Liberty on it in New York. And New Jersey fought for the rights to the Statue of Liberty, saying that it was really in their territory. So New Jersey won that, and they removed all the Statue of Liberties off the New York plates, and then you had a different plate again. License plate, you know, on the cars. So now she says... Um, the air bridge harbor that Twin Cities bring, okay? Keep ancient lands, your story pump. And that's in quotation marks. And what she's saying is if you have your, again, the textbook says pump, it's a footnote, stately or brilliant, brilliant display, splendor. So this word pump, the storied pump means it's a grand story. It's a wonderful story. These ancient lands have all of these beautiful, wonderful things about them. She's saying, keep it. Give me, um, cries she with silent lips because she's a statue, she doesn't talk. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. So huddled masses are people that are grouping together. They're poor, they're hungry, they've come on a long journey, they're all stressed out. And um, that's who she wants. She wants these people who are yearning to breathe free. They're yearning. They want the freedom so badly. They want to get out of their countries. They're coming here for this new life of prosperity and of, of things that they could have that they didn't have before. Their freedom. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. So wretched is like falling apart. It's a mess. It's worn out. Refuse are the people who are immigrants of your teeming shore. So teeming means swarming with people. So there are tons and tons of immigrants on the shore trying to come here. So um, I'm looking at your question. School is not going to start. It's finished for the year according to Mayor de Blasio. And I don't know if Cuomo will change that, but in September, hopefully you will be able to go back to high school and you'll have to come back and visit so I could see you guys. Um, so the last two lines, going back, I'm sorry for just reading your questions and I want to answer you guys. Send these, the homeless tempest tat to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. So again, she's saying, send these people who are homeless. They're exiled from their house, right? They're thrown out of their countries. Send them to me. And um, tempest tout means here they've suffered the stormy ocean journey. That's a footnote in your textbook. So tempest tout toast, having suffered a stormy ocean journey, okay, um, and because they're coming across the country, right, they're on a ship, I lift my lamp beside the golden door, so she's holding up this, this torch, um, so how are you guys doing, all right, that's pretty much it, now if I wanted to paraphrase this, I would use a thesaurus, so instead of 
in that first passage saying, not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, I might say mm, she's saying that the Statue of Liberty is not like the strong, powerful giant Colossus of Rhodes. Because you guys did research, a lot of you copied and pasted. I don't want you to copy and paste. I want you to use your own words. So get a thesaurus to help you learn new words. Instead of saying um, mighty woman with a torch, I could say the Statue of Liberty, um, whose flame is imprisoned lightning. Instead of saying imprisoned lightning, I might say um, the, the flame, the, this line is so powerful. The imprisoned lightning is such a powerful phrase because what it means is that the the light is encaged it's enclosed it's it's stuck within the borders and vocabulary um her name mother of exiles what well, you could look at the definition people who are forced to live in another country so you could say she is the mother of those people who are forced to live in another country She's accepting them in to take them in. Mother means love, right? You have a mother, they typically love you and take care of you. Um, it says your huddled mass is yearning to be free. Instead of using the word yearning, I might use the word longing or wanting. So um, I want you to redo this poem, but in your own words. So a thesaurus is really an awesome tool. You could use the dictionary, but it's not as good as a thesaurus when you're paraphrasing. And you do have to understand the words that you're choosing, because there could be more than one meaning. Like when I initially read the wretched refuse of your teeming shore, refuse is the same spelling as refuse. And refuse is a person and refuse is an action. So there's two totally different meanings. You have to be careful of the, the word you choose. If you have any questions, now's the time to use it. Um, if you need any ideas on what to do, I totally like planting. And this is my avocado seed. I have about four of them because every time I eat an avocado, I save it. You're supposed to use toothpicks. I use corn holders because I don't have toothpicks, but I do have my corn holders, which I love to use in my corn. And you put the bottom part down in the water and then eventually the, the plant will grow out the top. So I got a few of them because I heard one avocado tree won't produce avocados. You need a couple. They probably have to cross pollinate, you know, where the bees go from one flower to the other. They probably have like either male organs or female organs. So they have to cross pollinate. Um, I, I love science. When I used to teach science many, many years ago, I would have the students dissect flowers that had both parts, both anatomies, the female and male. Um, but sometimes plants only have one, so they have to cross-pollinate. When they have both, they could self-pollinate and create seeds on their own. But when they have to cross-pollinate, they need a bee or a wind or something to transfer the pollen to the other pistil. So that's your science lesson. Um, I also paint. Now, if you didn't know this, I'm going to show you my house, and I'm going to show you where I – this is my house in New Jersey. Usually I have been filming back in Brooklyn. So me and my son – made this, um, I don't know, you got a little bit of a view, but we made this elevated planter box. And um, here, I'll show you, I'll show you. This is my kid's room when they come visit me. I made a triple bunk bed for them. See, triple bunk bed. I got to wash the bottom sheet. It's actually done. I got to put it back on, but getting in there is so hard. It is so hard to, um, I'm sorry, got a, got a close up here. I want to show you, this is my painting room. Okay. And what I've been doing is painting this wall. See? So um, if you see down here, the white one, my kids one day sat on my, my hammock here and they swung into the wall and kicked a hole in it. So I decided I wasn't going to repaint this one, but I did fix the hole. I, um, what I did was, I'll show you my living room too. But um, I, I decided that I was going to call it the creative chaos wall and do all my paintings. So if you have Miss Palekia for art, sometimes she uses Art Sherpa for demonstrations. That's who I've been using. I love it. Now, I ate some tomatoes and peppers and I saved the seeds. So you can see I'm just, I have a little greenhouse here. They are finally growing, right? So... Look at my tomatoes, they're getting so big. This is straight from a tomato. So um, painting is so awesome. It's relaxing too, totally paint. I bought tons of canvases too. Um, 
I think I'm gonna have my own painting parties. I wanted a big canvas, but you had to buy a minimum of four packs. So each pack had like five. So these are little peppers straight from a pepper, and these are tomatoes, and they're growing so big. They, they say to start them little, and then you transfer them. And then here, I have a bunch of trees. I want to plant outside, but I haven't gotten to that yet. You can see the front of my yard. I love my New Jersey house. It is so pretty. Moving out of New York to New Jersey, oh my God, it's just so awesome. So pretty. But I do go back and forth, and I'm going to just open the window so my plants get some light. It's a rainy day. Is it raining by you guys? I'll show you my... This one's a little bit harder. So I've been trying to keep these trees alive since last year because I wanted to redo my yard and it was it was too hard. Oh my God, was it too hard. So when I first moved in, I bought this chair. Is this like the coolest thing? It's really kind of hard to get into. And I'll probably like kill myself trying to get in with the computer in my hand. But I have a fireplace, which is kind of a mess. I probably have to clean it out, but and this table, oh my goodness, see this table? I made that design in there. It's called Dirty Pour Art, right? And acrylic resin. So this is Dirty Pour Art type of thing. Hold on, I gotta get the lighting, right? It's actually such a cool, cool technique. Look it up. Dirty pour art, oh my God. You don't need everything they say like that. I did in the class, so it's a little shinier. They use like WD-40. This one, I did not have that stuff. That's one I just did. You like take a cup and you pour all the paint on top of each other in a cup and then you pour it onto the, the painting frame or whatever you're using, the canvas. And it makes those designs. And you could use like coleanders, like the draining things you use for vegetables. You get small ones and make little designs on it. I'm going to show you. I went a little crazy. And these are all the canvases I bought. <laughs> so hard to show. And my toilet paper that I'm always stocked. I'm not worried about toilet paper running out on me yet. But um, this toilet paper thing is crazy. So here is my second bathroom. My daughter picked out the curtain and everything. This morning, I had a spider that wanted to uh, join me in the shower. I'm not having that. That's the thing about New Jersey. There's way too many spiders. <laughs> but um, I'll show you my yard. We have been, my tenant really, because he's so good, been breaking down the trees in the back to clear it out. But this is how much work I have back here. Oh, oh my God, it's so hard. I don't even know. I wanted to bring my hammock in so I could wash it, but I guess it's getting rain washed now. There's so many cute birds out here and they just are, um, they're so cute and colorful. It's like, they just are just adorable. But it is raining. It's supposed to be thunderstorms today. And uh, I just, uh, I'm glad you guys joined me. It's so nice to see you guys. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, definitely ask. I know Dr. Gill and um, Mr. Flinsky both put up work to help in assisting. I put up a video to help you understand paraphrasing. It, it's really a tool you have to get used to because you're going to need it all through high school and college. You can't plagiarize. So all of you who took the text of the, the summary and paraphrasing and just posted it on, I sent it all back to you because I am going to grade this and I want you to do great in your own words, okay? So good luck. I will see you whenever you guys need me. Just I know students said to help explain this to me. I like you to try to do it by yourself first because the way I became the best reader was to sit here with a dictionary and define everything as I read so that I could understand what I was reading. You know, I know they always say use context clues, but if you don't understand every other word, Context clues cannot help you. You have to build the foundation first. You have to build up the knowledge of the vocabulary before you can start to use context clues. So go ahead, get your dictionary out. Use your thesaurus. I am a big fan of thesauruses. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Um, Aylin, definitely post your work, okay? Show me what you're doing. I'd love to see it. Any of you guys paint something, do something creative. Build a box. I had my son out here with a drill and we put the wood together. Um, and built my, I'm going to be growing all sorts of things. <laughs> I'll show you when they actually start to grow and 
hopefully I will see you next year. Come visit me. Okay. Bye.